In our third week in Lent, our mission, Wounds to Wonder, brings us to the idea of betrayal, the betrayal that Jesus experienced in his life and for us in our own lives, the betrayal that we might experience. In Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 14, verse 18 says, while they were reclining at table eating, Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, the one who is eating with me. Now immediately our mind goes to Judas, and rightly so. Judas betrayed Jesus that very night. But the truth is, Jesus experienced a lot of betrayal. Peter denies him. His disciples, his closest friends, those that he lived with, worked with, preached with, would run in fear. Pilate would wash his hands of the whole affair. His community, his temple, they would all betray him. And on the walk to Calvary, Jesus' own body, his strength, would betray him as well. Jesus experienced betrayal in a very real, profound, raw way. For us, in our lives, we have times in our own lives where we, too, experience betrayal. Where our family, our friends, maybe our church, co-workers, our community disappoints us, denies us, leaves us, in some way wrongs us that makes us feel as though we were betrayed. Each of us have had some of those very real, profound experiences, those very real hurts where we've felt left and betrayed. In those times, it's easy for us to focus in on the betrayer. And it's good to reflect on that. But a greater question is, in what ways do I see myself in that role of betrayer? How do I, like Judas, sell out? How do I, like Peter, deny? How do I run away? or wash my hands? How do I succumb to being worn out and tired? I think that's a very good question for us to ask. Where do we see ourselves? And I think a second question, an important question to ask is, what is it that we can learn from those experiences? And again, I think we go back to Jesus. Jesus, who lived through significant, profound betrayal, made it to that other side. And he did so not by denying the experience, not by glossing over it and saying, it's okay, but he did it through forgiveness. Again, the scriptures tell us one of his last utterings on the cross was, Father, forgive them. That's a clue for us, that forgiveness is the way for us to heal. Forgiveness is a way for us to move on. Forgiveness is a way for us, like Jesus, to be transformed, to be resurrected. You know, when Jesus met those after the resurrection, he showed them his wounds. He even said, touch my hands, put your hand in my side. He didn't deny the wounds he experienced, but he used them. He used them for others to show them, to teach them, to restore their faith. To me, that is the key, forgiveness. Not in a weak, passive way, but in a strong way where we take control of a situation and forgive so that we might be healed, so that we might move on, to forgive so that we might use the wounds that we experience in our life to help another. We become stronger, more understanding, more compassionate. I wonder what an incredible life we could live when we experience our wounds offer forgiveness and are transformed. I wonder. <laughs>